Hello, I'm Scott from Wartime NI, and I'm in Belfast. But I'm going to take you out into the country, out into rural Ulster, a long time ago, 80 years ago. I'm going to take you back to the publication of the newspaper Ireland Saturday Night. Now, in latter years, that paper became something of a weekly roundup of sporting activities across Ulster, but back then it was full of art, culture, literature, poetry and stories. Stories like the one that I'm going to tell you now. This kind of story reminds me very much of the ones that my grandmother used to tell. A fireside tale, one with a moral and a meaning, but one that was a little bit eerie. Because it's that time of year. It's spooky season. It's Samhain, Halloween. We're going back to the 31st of October. 1942 to the publication of a tale in a newspaper written only by someone known as LIT. It's a conversation between them and an old neighbour who, to use his own Ulster Scots vernacular, was known as Thomas. The newspaper published this story under the title A Halloween Vision, but I prefer to call it The Knockin'. I'm going to spend Halloween as I did last year, out at Isle Thomas's. I don't often get out to see him now at his wee cottage up at the end of the Lonin, what with the early blackouts and the fire watching and so on. But Halloween is ticked off in my mental calendar as Thomas's night, and nothing short of a blitz would make me miss it. A chance remark of mine concerning a family in the nearby district set his tongue a wagging. Och, deed I. James is a decent fella, and so was his da afore him. The folk said he wasn't ever the same again after the knocking. The knocking, I asked, sensing a story. Aye, the time his brother William appeared. Thomas took two or three draws at his pipe and gazed into the fire in a way which I had learnt meant that he was away back among the Aulians. I bided my time, waiting patiently for him to return to the story. You see, he went on, tapping his pipe against the fireplace, it was the boys and girls were up at Henry James for a bit of fun. There had been a good bit of feasting and dancing and so on, for Henry James, ever since his brother William had died, had I an open horn. It had been different when William was alive, and many the cross bit was said among them on account of William's stint and miserly ways. Well, the fun was at its height when one of the girls came running into the room. It was some time before they could mark heed in her tale of what she was saying. Howsomever, it seems she had been down at the passage at the end of the house, taking part in some game. She saw a man standing as though listening. She was just creeping up on him to give him a fright when he turned and looked at her. It was William, and he had died eight months before. She screamed and ran past them, out of the room. Did no one else see the ghost? I asked. We'll know then anyway. It sort of put a wet blanket on the rest of the evening and soon they all decided it was time to go home. James Henry pooh pooed the story, but Mary, the wife, was worried. The night, they weren't settled down hardly till Mary sat up in bed. James, did you hear that? Someone's knocking. They listened. There it was again. A quiet knocking at the front door. Mary peeped out of the bedroom window. The man was standing there in the moonlight. James hurried down to open up the bedroom door. Heard the bolts and chains withdrawn, Mary listened from the bedroom door. The door creaked open, a moment's silence, and then she heard her husband's voice gasping as though in terror. <laughs> William, don't. Then the door banged shut, and all was still. Racing downstairs, she found James Henry lying unconscious beside the door. What had happened? I asked. 
for Thomas had gone back into his dreaming into the fire and he shook his head. I don't know, he said, and nobody ever will, for James Henry never spoke of it for this day to that. You see, he was never the same again. In what way did it affect him? Och, some of the folks would hey you believe that he was a wee bit touched like after, but I don't think he was. Certainly he didn't throw his money around as much as before and folks all thought he had turned miserly. But they learned different a few years later when he died. It seems that for the last year or so of his earthly journey, James Henry had spent his money doing good. Many's the orphan child and helpless widow prayed for his soul the night he passed away. I thought of the rich man who, we're told, wished to return after death to warn his brothers. And I mentioned this to Thomas. Maybe, he said, I don't know. One thing is certain. He saw William. And for that day, he lost all heart in laying up treasure.